Professor Mark Nelson from Tasmania, an internationally renowned researcher, told us about the most recent research on aspirin. Should I take aspirin in primary prevention of cardiovascular disease? Well, the answer is no. I mean, all of the three major uh, studies that reported ARRIVE, Esprit, and ASCEND reported uh, uh, no difference in outcome. And especially, so I know more about the over, eight, uh, over 70 group, is that there was a signal for harm. So there was a bleeding risk, which is what we expected, but we also found uh, the risk of uh, cancer mortality. Now, given that that is a secondary outcome, we've got to be more careful about attributing to say that it is. It is the opposite of what was expected for systematic reviews and meta-analyses, but it is what it is. And so we would be amiss if we didn't point it out as being a safety concern. So the question you asked, which was from the New England Journal, was should I stop my aspirin? Yes, so the interesting thing for us is it was interpreted usually when you're talking about uh, the use of a therapeutic agent, it's not about prior use. For example, if you do a statin study or a blood pressure alone study, you, you just say, well, if I'm treating prospectively, is there any benefit? But because there was a conviction that there was this uh, prophylactic benefit, even if you didn't have a clinical indication for it, such as a past stroke or myocardial infarction, that people would do it. And as I mentioned in my talk, is that 38% of the Americans who were recruited into the study were taking long-term um, aspirin without a clinical indication for it. So people were convinced they should take it. So about 11% of our cohort were taking it, just over 2,000 individuals. So it was interpreted, therefore, that, that okay, but that only um, applies to people who are initiating it. We can't say anything about people who aren't. I would take the opposite tract is that why are they a special group? You know, they may have demonstrated, it might be self-selected for tolerance, you know, if you have a bleeding ulcer, you're going to stop taking it. Um, but things like the potential for harm, such as cancer risk, it would suggest if there is a harm, and if you looked at our data, it showed that the diversion occurred at about three and a half years and continued the longer you were exposed. So the longer the, your exposure, uh, the more at risk you were. And looking at the subgroup analysis, it showed that the 10 year plus, where you're supposed to start to see the benefit um, from the systematic reviews and meta-analysis, we actually showed that they actually had a significant uh, increase in in uh, mortality risk. The, the inter interesting thing is we didn't find any difference in incidence. So it's, it doesn't seem to have anything to do, if it is a real effect, I have to admit that it's still possibility, that it was a long shot. Um, but if it, is, if, it, if it is a reality, is that it wasn't any particular cancer, it was all, it was all cancers as a group. So, and it wasn't to do with uh, carcinogenesis or the presentation of the cancer, it seems to be related to how the cancer spreads. And if you present with um, dissemination, you've got a higher mortality rate. So that's why they had the higher mortality rate. It wasn't the incidence of cancer, it seems that there were more aggressive forms of cancer. So finally, as a message for our clinical viewers, what would be your take home message? Well, my take home message is I think we should always be careful about the use of prophylactic medication in the absence of disease, uh, where disease is defined not by a subclinical definition, but disease, patients who have symptoms. So people who have overt um, uh, cardiovascular disease, have had stroke, TIAs, angina, um, et cetera, no doubt. Systematic reviews, meta-analysis, level one evidence, they should be taking it. I think that the answer from all of the studies, not just ours, is that that's another medication we can stop giving the elderly and stop contributing to polypharmacy. It showed no overall benefit and there was a possibility of significant harm.